Mimecast provides services such as email filtering and security awareness training. In this video, I'll be taking you through the security awareness training dashboard, including how to schedule videos and how to use the phishing simulation. So here I've logged into my Mimecast dashboard as an admin. Over on the left here, we've got what is known as our risk score. So out of everyone in the company, we are currently sitting at a very good risk score. This means that we shouldn't be very susceptible to an attack. Now below this, we've also got the scoring factors so you can find out more about what makes up the risk score. So things like employees attitude, their engagement with the video content and their knowledge. So how many correct answers they've been getting. To the right of this, you've got your performance statistics. So that includes things like the number of modules completed. Now, say, for example, you've sent 10 videos to 25 employees, your module completion score would be out of 250. Again, on this example, correct responses will also be out of 250. So how many correct responses out of all the videos you've sent to all your employees? You can create departments and add industries too for comparison. So if I expand this, you can see all the different departments that we have, who is performing very well. And you can see your company versus industry comparison. So our industry, we've put us telecom and technology. So we're actually performing really well for our industry. And you can add other ones here. So you can see there's some different options here. So healthcare, manufacturing, education, how well on average they are performing. Down the bottom here, we also have our attitude tracker that measures your employee's attitude to security in general. If we expand this and hit show details, then you can see this is all based off the response per module. So you can see I understand how security threats can impact the organization. That's very positive. People have responded really well to that and they they agree with that. However, some of the other ones. So down here, I know what steps I can take to help prevent a breach. People are a little less positive on that one, so perhaps they need some further training on knowing what steps they can to prevent that. So back at the top here, we have our modules and you will see 10 modules at a time, whether they have been completed or not. So you can see this one on the end is slightly, slightly doled out. So that means that we haven't actually sent that module out yet. If we click on one, this will take you to the specific module. You can even see the video here and re-watch it if you want to. Here you can see how many people have completed the module and how many correct responses. So we can see that we sent it to 27 people and 26 people completed it. And over here, 26 people have completed it and 24 got the correct response. You can see just below the video on the left hand side, you can see all the answers and you can see which ones people chose. So here you can see 92% of our staff got the correct response right and 8% clicked the wrong one. It also comes up with a little safety tip as well. And once again, we have an industry comparison based on this specific module, which is data in motion. So you can see that we've performed really well compared to others within our industry on this video. You then have some custom features which can be really helpful. So the first up is module email. So you can customize the email that is sent when it's time for your employees to take the training. For example, some people set up one video per month to send. So if I click into here, you can see that you can edit this. Now, as I've already sent the video, I can't edit this. But if you've got one, for example, number 10, which has not been sent yet, you could then edit the email before it's sent. So some people do like to send them once a month. So you could say here is your monthly installment. You can also customize GIFs. So at the end of your video, when you send the correct answer, there is a GIF that will pop up and you can actually pick your own GIF as well. So when an employee gets a question right or wrong, your custom GIFs will show. So you can actually record your own GIFs and upload them, but they obviously must be GIF files. And finally, you have your custom content. So once an employee watches the video, completes the question, you can show them a custom PDF file. Now it could be a policy reminder, it could be a helpful infographic related to the video. It's whatever you feel is right and how far you want to customise your video content. And of course you don't have to customise but all those options are available. 
And it's worth noting when you customize that you do have to do it per module. So if you upload GIFs to one module, you will have to upload them to all of them individually. It won't just set it across all of them. And finally, just something to note on your dashboard is that you can download reports as well. The next tab along the top here, we've got performance. So under performance, there are three sections. You have watch list, achievement and risk score. So the first is watch list, and this will show you employees who may be of concern. Perhaps they need some additional training or support. Down the left, you'll see the number of unwatched videos and you can view the details so you can see who they are. Then below this, you'll have the number of unwatched videos from those on the watch list. So you can click and see who they are. So you can see that six employees have one unwatched video. And you can also see like who has two unwatched videos, who has three, who has four or more unwatched videos and so on. And you can also see a watch list by department. So those custom departments that you sent up earlier, you can see who is in which area of the business. Next up, we have achievement. So this will show you how many employees you have participating in your campaign up here. So at the moment we have 23 participating employees. We've sent 207 videos and six videos have not been seen out of those 207. Now, again, just a reminder that video sent is based on the number of videos per employee. So if you sent 10 videos per employee, that makes 250 if you have 25 employees. So here you can see correct responses. So all correct responses means that there are four employees here that have got every single response on a video correct, which is really, really good. Um, you can see how many people have got one incorrect response, two, three, four, etc. And you can, of course, view these so you can pick up with individuals should they need further training or encouragement. To write, you then have performance per department. So departments are based on what you input when adding news to your campaign. So you can see which departments are performing well. And finally, along the top here, you have your risk score. It basically shows you what level risk score your employees have. So you can see we're all sitting fairly evenly on here. Um, you can see that we've got employees with very good risk scores, good risk scores. Luckily, we haven't got any with a fair or poor or a very poor. The next section we have is modules. So there are three columns on the modules. So on the left, you have your campaign and on the far right is your queue. And the middle is the training videos that are available. So going into modules is where you would schedule your videos to be sent. Now, the difference between the queue and the campaigns is that campaigns go to specific groups of people, whereas your queue will be sent to your entire employee list. I'll show you how to check the employee list in a bit. Campaigns are useful, for example, if a specific team or department needs more training or if you bring a new employee in and you want to get them up to speed on all the videos that you've already sent. Now, if we're looking to schedule a video, the videos are set into different topics. So you can see here we have data in motion. And if you want to know a bit more about that, you can hover over the little question mark. That will tell you more about the general topic there. If we look at the videos, you can hover over the video and you can see a little pop up appears, which tells you more about that specific video. If we scroll through, you can see there are different ones here. Now, the videos are grouped, which means they can be grouped for specific topics or specific roles. The DevSecOps one here is more aimed at development teams. So your coding etiquette and things like that. Now, when you're hovering over the video, you can see here we've got two options, which is schedule and launch. You may actually have a different option to launch. You may have one that says add to your campaign. It depends on your settings. So if we were to hit schedule, this would then select a release date. Now, schedule goes directly into your queue and that's that queue is to send to all of your employees. So you can schedule it for a future date. And if you were to hit continue, it would add it to your queue. If you hit launch or add to your campaign as you might have, it will take you to the campaign setup. So you can set up a whole campaign, you can select a group or you can create a new one. So example, as we mentioned earlier, if you have a new employee, you can send it just to them or you can send it to all staff or you can send it to a specific group if they need further training. And you can select a launch date for that as well. 
Now I said before that I would show you how to find out who your list sends to and how to edit this. So to do this, you're gonna go up to your name here and you're gonna go into your settings. And we'll take a little look through our settings before I show you the fishing simulation area. So we've gone into our settings and just below your name here, you've got manage employees at the top. And this is the list that your queue will send to. So you can edit and delete as needed. So you can hover over and hit the edit button. You can delete someone when you no longer need them. And if you edit them, you can change their access too. You can also add a new user here. Now on the left hand toolbar, under the add slash change, you can also see groups. So groups is where you can edit campaign groups. So again, as we mentioned, if you want to send one just to a new employee, you could name your group Sam introduction, you could click next, you could add her specifically to a group, and then you can send her a campaign of all the previous videos that you've already sent out to all your other staff. Now again, back up here next to manage employees, we have email. So email is the reminders for the videos. If, for example, you've sent a video out and someone hasn't watched it after the first email reminder, further reminders will then be sent. And you can edit these in here. So if you want to view or edit the email, you can do that. And you can say, oh, it's been four weeks, you still haven't completed this. You can edit it however you want. You can also disable alerts so if you don't want them to go every single week, then you can change that as well. And finally, along the top here, you have your company settings. So there's a few key ones that I just want to show you. So your organization type, as I mentioned earlier, this is where you compare to different industries. So if you wanted to change that, you can change that here. You can change your logo here as well. You can change employee deletion settings. So if you delete an employee, do you want to delete them entirely from the system or do you want to mark them as inactive, which means that their previous scores will go against your score? Reply to or source address. So if someone was to reply to an email that you sent, where would you want that to go? Basically is what that one means. And then the other one here, I just want to show you is the new user policy. So this is whether or not newly added users get all past videos. So do they only get the new ones that come out or will they automatically get sent the old ones? So the next one we're gonna go on to is the phishing simulation, which is a really, really handy tool. So when you go on here, you're in the email template section. So you can review the phishing simulation emails ahead of sending them to your employees. You have single page templates multi-page or you can even create your own if you're feeling brave. So if you click on a single or multi-page template, you can view the email and see what it will look like. When you hit next page on a single page email, it will show you the website that will appear if someone clicks on the phishing link. No harm done. On a multi-page template, when someone clicks on the phishing link, it will ask them to enter more details. So it's almost like a second step. So they've already been taken in by the email and click the link. They're then going to enter some details, which they shouldn't be. And it will then take you to the landing page. And again, you'll get a little GIF. You've got a no harm done. It'll also give you some advice on not clicking on those links in the future. You get a real one. You can create copies of single page templates so you can customize them to your organization but due to the landing page requesting further details you can't edit a multi-page otherwise the email on the landing page might not match and then when you have custom templates that means you can completely start from scratch up here you have your display title so that is the title that will appear in mimecast so you can find the email easily when you're scheduling it your subject is your subject line your from email, so there's a wide range to select from, all about accounting or deliveries or employee news. So there's a whole range that should be able to match the kind of phishing simulation you are going to send out. Keyword relates to the topic of your email, so that just helps you in future when you're scheduling. Then you can create your email here in the email template box. So that includes images, you can format your text, you can add your links things like that. 
and I'll just quickly show you here is one that we created earlier so it was based on a fake Amazon shipping and we can we put our MD's name in it so your gift has shipped just to try and trick people into thinking that John had sent them a gift now if we scroll back up to the top and we go on campaigns you can see the previous ones that you've sent to schedule a phishing campaign, you hit the add campaign button here. You give the campaign a name and then you have the option for random and non-random. Random means you select a topic and any email under that topic will be sent. And non-random means you select a specific email to send. So if I select random under templates, you choose the topic. So you can see free promotion, shipping, tracking, current news. If I switch over to non-random templates and click on templates, you can see the specific template names. So as we said earlier, when you're picking keywords or you're picking a name for your email, you want to pick. So this is a OneDrive email here that we're going to send, not just a general topic about cloud or file sharing. You can also choose different languages. So if you do have staff abroad in different countries, then you can pick a different language. So it's set to their specific language, which is really useful. Under group name, so again, you can set specific groups. So if you do have staff abroad, you might want to send a specific email in a specific language to one group and then an email in another language to another group. Or you could change different departments. So you might want to send your accounts department an accounts themed one. You might want to send your marketing team a file share one. So that way you're really trying to trick them into clicking it. You then want to choose your launch date. So when you're going to send the email. And then you can select your from email address again. So you can use the template defaults um, or you can select one yourself depending on what best fits with the email you're sending. And then finally, you have your time zone. So once again, if you have offices abroad, you might want to send it during a different time to make it seem more realistic. And then you can hit create. So once your email is sent, you can then click on the email. So if I go into our OneDrive one that we sent, and you can get all the stats. So you can see how many people have opened it, how many people have clicked on it. So open isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just means someone's opened it in their inbox. If they haven't opened it, they've probably deleted it straight away. And how many people clicked on it? So that's when we get them. So if they click on the fake phishing link, that's when you're probably going to wonder why have they clicked on that? And what was the reason for it? And you can also see who's clicked and who's opened here. So you can see the status. Obviously, no one did click. So that's really good. But you can see who actually opened it as well. And here at Breakwater, we actually have a policy where if you receive a suspicious email, you do have to alert the rest of the team. Normally, that's by email to make sure that everyone gets it. So if a phishing email came through, usually on our simulation, someone will pick that up and they will say, I've received this suspicious email. Don't open it. Finally, you do also have your video library up here. So this is more of a personal section as opposed to the admin. So each employee will see something different depending on what videos they've watched. So you can see I've watched all the videos and I'm all up to date. You can even re-watch previous module videos that you've had sent to you. And just at the top here by your name, you've got this little gold star. It might be different depending on how many videos you've watched. And that will tell you the different types of videos you've watched. So I've watched five phishing ones. I've watched one password one. And that is an overview of the Mimecast awareness training and phishing simulation dashboard.